alone, and yet the Lord spoke to his heart, and God ministered to him. Following Christ means, in our heart and mind, we can say to the Lord, no matter what, we're going to follow. No matter what. It may be a tough road, but that tough road is paved with joy and reward. Hallelujah. It may be a tough road, but that tough road is full of the peace that passes understanding. It may be a tough road, but that tough road has with it, brings with it forgiveness and the joy in the Lord and direction from God and the assurance of the presence of Jesus with us who said, I will never leave you or forsake you. These are the promises we hold on to, even though the road may be tough. He said to this man, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And so he's saying, that's your personal commitment. And so there it is, see. It may be very difficult, but you go proclaim the kingdom of God. You see, we can't shirk our responsibility as a follower of Jesus Christ. He says to you, follow. You go proclaim. He says to you, it's a personal commitment to follow the Lord as we finish this year. And we're almost, we're on the threshold of 2016. The Lord wants us to follow Him. He's saying to us, you follow. I don't know what it will mean in your life, whether you're young or old or what direction the Lord might lead you. But I do know, He says to each follower of Christ, each believer in Jesus, follow, 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 follow. Just as sure as there was a lot of time between the promise to Abraham, leave your homeland, I'm going to show you where, there was a lot of time in between there. He had to trust the Lord as he followed. The apostle found himself in prison. He had to learn to sing in prison. It was a hard road, but yet the Lord was with him. And he had what nobody else had. And that is the closeness of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ always with him. Listen, friends, don't trade the love of Jesus in for anything in your life. You hear what I'm saying? Don't trade it in. Don't swap it out for something else. The love of Jesus will carry you into eternity. And when everything else is gone, you can stand before the Lord with a good conscience. Say, yes, Lord, I followed. Yes, Lord, I trust. Yes, Lord, I believe. You can fall right into eternity. Let the world do what the world's going to do. Let them go their way, but you follow. Just like in the case of Isaiah. Even though no one was going to repent, and that was kind of the word he received, and he had to follow. He said, Lord, here I am. Send me. There were times when the apostle Paul, when he was preaching, they resisted. And there was times they accepted. It wasn't up to the apostle. That was up to God. That's God's work. Let God do His work, but you do yours. You follow. You trust. The Lord will carry you through 2016. Maybe we'll see Jesus this year. We don't know that. But we might see Him this year. Will you be ready? Will you be prepared for that? This is a good day to prepare for it. A good day. You know, it's a privilege to follow the Lord. Scripture says, How beautiful on the mountaintops are the feet of those that bring good news. And that was Isaiah that said that. How beautiful. And then Paul repeated it in Romans 10. Finally, in Luke 9, 
Another one said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service and the kingdom of God. I failed you up here. Lord, sorry about that. Don't look back. <clears throat> Don't look back. Look straight ahead. The Lord knows what no one else knows, and that is He knows your heart. He knows your intent, your motive. Okay? Don't be easy on yourself. Okay? Our hearts are wicked and inclined to fall away from God. That's the truth. The grace of God is abundant. And He accepts us by His grace and mercy as we put our simple faith and trust in Him. But when He calls us to follow, don't be looking back, wondering, did I do the right thing? You might, maybe you made some commitments this year to the Lord and uh, you've wondered, was that the right thing to do? Don't do that. Don't do that. You follow the Lord. Let everybody else do what they're going to do. You follow the Lord. You trust Him. Okay? Um, there's that pull that's the, that everybody experiences. And in this case, this man, and of course the Lord knew his heart, he had an excuse in, the, in his motive. There's a problem. Lord, first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And he says, no one that puts his hand to his plow looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Jesus pushes us, pushes us, pushes us. Sometimes people will say that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And I, I, I am inclined to say, well, maybe most of the time, but have you read the Bible? That Saul of Tarsus was shaken to his core on the road to Damascus. He was left with no options. <laughs> when you look at that story, he was left with no options. Um, look at the Bible. The, the life of the prophets were difficult lives. The, the apostles who left everything to follow Jesus which hardly this generation knows anything about it. About leaving things to follow Christ. The Lord calls us. See, the message of the gospel has not changed in He calls us to follow Jesus. We're not apostles. We're not prophets. But we are followers of Christ. The Lord calls us to follow Him. And what you have to leave may be different from what I have to leave. But the Scripture says, leave all to follow. <clears throat> and I don't know in your life what that will mean. But I know that He calls us to follow. The Lord pushes. Sometimes tugs. Sometimes it's shocking what God does to shake us to our core so that we can get our attention if we're going to follow. The purpose of the kingdom of God is dependent on the people of God in this generation. And that's people like you and people like me. The, the purpose of this kingdom is dependent on us. I don't know why the Lord has chosen to do it this way. You know, when I think about it, He could have gotten, He should have gotten somebody better than me to, to do this kind of work. Think about it. He, he should have selected some others, but He didn't. He didn't. He's calling you to follow Him. He's calling you to proclaim the kingdom. He's calling you to share the faith. He's calling you to be the light in this world. Not somebody else, but you. What will you do? How will you handle it? We're just people. We're flesh and bone. <clears throat> it's not easy some days. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Almost lost it. <coughs> Get some water, please. <coughs> Thank you. 
<clears throat> We've talked about the Christmas story, the birth of Christ, and the kingdom that has come. Life that's come into the world. Thank you so much. The peace has been announced. All of these things are nice for us. But when the day is done and you put your head on the pillow, the question is, did you follow Jesus today? When it's all done, the question, the question comes back to us. Have we followed Christ? Where are we with the Lord? Really? Really? What is our heart? What, what is our motive? Where are we with, with Christ? It's an interesting line. There are many hindrances on every side to following Jesus. It is not easy. The book of Hebrews tells us there's a great cloud of witnesses. And he said, since there is this cloud of witnesses, that we should throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that easily entangles us and run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. The call is clear. It's direct and certain. Temptations will hinder and Satan will try to stop you. You must push aside every hindrance. Every hindrance. Can you say yes today to wherever He wants you to follow? Can you say yes today? Have you counted the cost of what it means to follow Jesus Christ? In the end, you will have to answer to God. We are accountable to God. Our, we are those that have heard the word of this truth. We are those that have heard the message of Jesus Christ. We will have to answer to Him. As we think about this service, we finish up this year, we go into the next year, if Jesus doesn't return before then, then are we going to be ready are you prepared? Let's take a minute and bow our heads and ask the Lord to help us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, this call to follow It's not, it's not an easy one. But yet, yeah, Lord, your word is going out today. The best that I could, Lord, I've tried to share. I pray for each one. There may be some that want to, want to today say, yes, I will follow Jesus Christ. Yes, I will follow Him. I want to ask you today, if you want to renew your commitment to follow Jesus and you just want to say yes, just lift your hand up. I want to pray for you, okay? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I will follow Jesus. Amen. Father, right now, there's a few that are saying yes. Lord, I just ask you that you would renew and refresh 
these commitments and more. We don't know what it will mean for us in 2016, this year that's upon us. We can't be looking behind. We've got our hand to the plow. We want to go forward in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that uh, you would refresh and renew our hope and our commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Increase our faith, Lord. Make us, Lord, people you could use in this generation. Lord, make us the kind of people that you would be pleased with to hold this precious gospel message out to a dying world. Help us, Lord. I pray, Father, for those that are here that each one will know deep in their hearts that they're following Jesus Christ. Lord, help us turn away from anything that hinders, I pray. And Lord, I just want to thank you for a few minutes in your word. And I ask you to strengthen and help us to draw near to you and follow wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.